Basil Chapman, what's going on? Wow, talk about off to the races. Yes. Yeah. Look at the Dow on the left side here. Yeah, this is the daily chart. In the middle is the weekly, and the, on the right is the monthly. The gap down that we've got just yesterday, um, we were looking at 35,091. And I said to subscribers, I, we're going to see whether or not this is a touch, the millennium level of uh, 35,000, and then reverse like it's uh, like the third rail. Uh, we've got to watch it closely. So we have reversed. But what's really interesting, and you were discussing some of this uh, a little earlier, is the rotation. When we make tops, very, not always, sometimes we make coincident tops, but they're usually very short term as all the indices come together. But most of the time, we're looking at a rotation because each index and each sector has its own cycle. So we've seen that the... Uh, Semiconductors made a, a top back in February. Just it goes, it rotates through the sectors, and Qs became later on S and P, and then IWM, of course, was uh, earlier. So we, we've seen that just a few days ago, the Dow made its high, and then the S and P joined it on Friday, and now they're both pulling back. So what I'm looking at here is there's a chance. Is I'm thinking of turbulent waters. Uh, and you're on the on this boat, and and waves come from the one side, and they come from the other side. So we've already seen the rotation. Let me just show this here. This is the, the let's go through the IWM. So the IWM made a high back uh, on March the 15th at 234, drops down to 208, rallies to the 230s, slumps again, and today's low of two in the 214 area has seen a nice candle. But what we're really looking at is a sideways action. My concern here is that there's a chance of be making a head and shoulders in the weekly. There's the left side high, much higher high for the head, and then um, almost a matching right side high uh, in the 232-ish area. And we've got to watch this closely because if there is a slide under 208, we're probably going to take out this left side low of 207, um, which is from the week of the 5th of March. So there needs to be at least a decent counter trend rally here, and we can go sideways for a little longer. And if you're looking at the uh, the QQQ, you'll see the Qs made a high on the 29th of, um, that's 29th of April at 3.42. Really, it was the 3.42.23 high that was made a little earlier in April, then it double topped. And it's broken down. And, and you think of it, it's in just a week and a half, two weeks, it's gone from 342 to today's low of 319. So, yes, it's ready for a bit of a rotational bounce. And if you look at the SMHs, and I always talk about the SMHs as, I mean, just throughout the years, it's actually throughout the decades, when the SMHs do very well, generally the market does. And when they start to fail, at some point, the market starts to slide. So we're looking at the SMHs, which made a high. I'll, I'll go back a little bit further because they double topped. But basically, it was the high of the 16th of February, 258, plummet down to 216. That was a very deep uh, correction. But then it had a good rally and fell by just over a point to make a new high, 257.54. And that was early April. And then all of a sudden, it comes down. So for subscribers, we've been looking at this for some time. We've been short for a little while. Uh, in the 253 area, and we plummeted down to 225 this morning. Nice rebound, but I think that's all it is. And basically, it's stuck in this rectangle formation. This is the semiconductor market vectors ETF, 258 high. And uh, we're looking at the chances are good that in May, at some point in May, we should test 216. That was the low of the 12th, week of the 12th of March. So it's rotational. And then because the Dow and the S&P were the last to make their highs, so they are under a little bit more pressure. So the others can bounce. And as I think as they bounce, so the S&P, and I'll just do this quickly, the S&P, which made a high uh, at 4238.04 4, 4, just three days ago, uh, dropped down to uh, 4,111 this morning having a very nice counter trend bounce, but I think it's just a bounce. So what I'm really looking at here is there's a rotation going on. Sometimes, doesn't happen often, but sometimes the rotation usurps some of the downside momentum so that you start to use time more than price. So that's really what I'm looking at. How, how do we come out of it? Uh, we still remain along the Dow. Um, 
I'm just looking at this and saying, and I spoke about this a couple of days ago. I said, even if we break and we've broken more than a one to one to the upside in this rectangle formation, this whole area must become a very strong support on any weakness. And that makes the 33,600s absolutely imperative for the Dow to hold, because if it breaks that, then all of a sudden you're looking at the weekly charts starting to uh, see some technicals that are fading. But at this point, I have to just consider that it is a consolidation, a rotational consolidation. And uh, we've been telling subscribers we're trying to raise some cash because there are going to be some very nice buys coming up. We've taken some profits. We took some really nice profits in one of the stocks, 147% uh, off the remaining part. And this is one that screamed uh, DDD 3D systems from the eight and a quarter area where we went long. It screamed all the way up to 56.50, uh, came down very sharply we, on the way up. And, and even on the way down, we took a little bit of profit. And I said today, let's get out of the core position on this balance. I think it's going to come and do some retesting. We can always get back in. But this is a time to kind of build up a portfolio of cash as well as uh, stocks. So we're building up some cash. So this is, and you, you know, we were looking at, you were talking about gold. What's interesting about the GDX is that it's it's holding very well here. And the, this is the gold mine. We are along the gold miners and we are along a gold stock. So it's the first time we've actually had good positions in the uh, gold area. And I think that uh, it's telling us that this is going to become an area that um, in terms of uh, we, we've had huge profits in the Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin is now stuck in a range. And as it's stuck in the range, I think gold is going to become a little more attractive. And the dollar, I think you're right. There's a pattern that I talk about very often. I call, it's a, I, there's a pattern I talk about, which is called the falling axe. And basically all it is, is I'm looking at, I'll, I'll show you this pattern right here. Uh, whoops, you got the music. Well, what's happened is we started to break support in the dollar. So if this uh, 90 level, 88, um, 89 level in the yeah. dollar breaks, it can pull back quite sharply, yeah. Yeah. Folks, come on over to our website at TFNN. You go to the newsletters, you see the opening call right on the right-hand side. You hit that baby, and you are off to the races. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom.